Hi, welcome to this video. Uh, this is the second part looking at uh, polygon modeling inside of 3D Coat. Uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to create an object inside of Maya and we're going to bring that into 3D Coat, make some changes to that model and take it back and check the scale of that model to, to make sure that we've got compatibility between the two for our, in terms of our model. Um, there are specific 3D app links, 3D code app links for this, but I'm going to show you a manual method of doing it just, just so we can understand what's going on behind the scenes, so to speak. So let's jump over to Maya. And inside of Maya, I'm going to create a simple cube object to begin with. And this object has its own UV by default, which looks something like this. So what I'll do first is just change the geometry around a little bit in here because our dimensions are pretty even. So it's not a very good um, thing to, to measure against. And talking of measuring, let's just check our units first that, uh, and, and see what our units of measurement are. To do that, we'll go to Windows, Settings and Preferences. And we'll go down here to settings and we'll see that we are at the moment we're working in centimeters. So I'm going to leave everything as it is inside of Maya and just close that down. Then just to double check what I'll do is go to create measure tools, distance tool, and I'll make sure that my um, snapping is on here. And I will do a quick measurement here from this side to this side just to check. So I'll put the first locator there onto that vertice and then second one will snap to there and you can see that the dimension is one. Okay, so let's change this object around a little bit more so it's a little bit different on one side than the other. To do that, I'll just turn the snapping off for this. I'll select uh, an edge, select move, click on the edge I want to move and move that up. I'll create a new measurement and measure this line here. Go to create, measure tools, measure distance tool, and make sure my snap is back on. I'll snap my first point to there, my second one here. And I know now that this line is 4.1221. So it's just an arbitrary number. It's just so we've got something a little bit different, otherwise each side would be exactly the same. Okay, I'll leave those there, and now I'll go back to my object mode, select the cube, and export this object out. So we'll go to File, Export Selection, and inside my folder here, I will just call this one uh, Cube01. So this has been exported from Maya as an, a as an OBJ. Let's jump over into 3D Count now. And there are very different ways of doing this. As I've mentioned before, there are 3D app links which, which actually do this um, uh, for you. But one of the methods that I use if I'm going to just do this manually is I will select this object, uh, s this option here rather. So let's click on there and click on this folder to import. And there's our model. Import that model. And as it brings it in, you can see that here we've got um, an existing UV map, which is the one that Maya creates, and a uh, sorry, a UV uh, set name, which is a default name that Maya spits out with the model, as well as a, a dimension for the texture, which 3D Code is asking me what what dimension do you want your texture at. It's not really important for this, so I'll just click OK. So inside the paint workspace, my model comes in. I'm currently in orthographic mode, so that's why it looks a bit strange. So toggling this switch here will toggle between orthographic and perspective. Now, as this model's come in, uh, we can't actually modify this model in any way. It's just an object for painting on. So if I select 
here and start painting then all I'm doing is painting I can't pick any of these vertices and start moving it around it's it's treating it as a paint object which is no use to me but you can see here under this menu called paint objects which you can locate by going on to windows panels and it'll be in this list you can see here that I've got an object called P cube one which is the model from Maya if I turn that one on and off then you can see it's this is the layer which contains this uh, sorry this object is um, represented by this with this name here I've also got a surface name which again we noticed at the beginning on the beginning dialogue was called uh, initial shading group as well so what I'll do here just is and it, this will seem a little bit strange at the beginning but I'm going to turn this one off uh, the visibility off on it uh, it's still there it's just that I, I'm just making it um, uh, I don't want to see it at this point so from there what I'll do is I'll go over to the paint room here and I will go into the modeling room and at this point I w there's no model in here because what I want to do is I want to take that model from the paint room and bring it into this room uh, so we'll go to mesh and there's an option here which says take mesh from paint room so once I've done that you can see it's brought that object in but now everything is selectable in terms of the geometry you can also see on my UV preview which again you can access by going to windows panels and UV preview uh, I've got a UV preview of what Maya sent over which is the exact same UV layout so just going back a step why did I turn off that uh, model if I go over to uh, my polygroup here this polygroup name here is this object if I turn that off you can see there's nothing behind there if I'd have left that model in the paint paint room here if I hadn't have turned it off here let's go back to the modeling room now and if I turn off this poly, poly group here, you can see that that paint object still remains in the background. So that's the reason I turn it off inside the paint room. It's just to make things simpler for myself. I don't want that reference object in the background. In fact, what I can do is just hop over back into the paint room, paint room now and actually delete that cube because it served its purpose all I needed was to bring it into here and then I've got my um, 3d uh, sorry my modeling uh, room which now contains the object so if I just delete this cube now it deletes it from the paint room but if I go to modeling um, and turn on my polygroup model again you'll see that my model is still intact so this is just as I said there's many different ways of doing this all I'm doing is I'm just showing you a manual way of bringing this in just to show that it can um, uh, just one method of doing it really all right so let's start modifying this object so I'll go to my um, select tool first make sure my faces are selected and click on the first face and you can see it's also selected it in my UV pre my UV window down here and I'll choose uh, smart extrude we're only going to do some simple adjustments on this and I will double click on this face which I selected and if I now use my right mouse button I can scale that one in and again I'll use my left mouse button to double click and I'll swap over now to an autographic projection projection and go to my uh, right view here and with the left mouse button I will drag this up so I've just extruded that out so there's my first edit on here and what I'll do now is I'll just bevel this one so I'll change my selection over to edges and it by default it's just selected all those edges for me which is fine and then I'll hit spacebar and down here to bevel 
and here I'll manually just change the bevel so I can make it any size. I'll, I'll just leave it at there, change the number of segments in there, just keep it simple, I'll leave it at two and click OK. All right, so let's say that that's my edited model at this point. So let's change something else on the model now and let's change this UV because you can see with the edits that I've just made, I've updated this UV slightly, you can see here, but the UV is actually all wrong now because it's just trying to make sense of what I did and do something in the UV space. So I want to make a new UV map. So I don't need to leave this room, I can do everything inside of here. So just scrolling down this list here, I can mark some edge loops on here to make a new um, UV map. Now, one thing you'll notice here is this UV preview keeps changing and it's co quite confusing uh, what's going on. So when it's stable like this, and I'm moving around in the screen, not touching the object, um, this is the existing uh, UV that it's going to try and make. Okay. Now, if I move over to uh, different parts of the model, you can see it's it's trying to sort of change that around, and it keeps sort of jumping around. Um, don't worry about that just yet. It's it is actually extremely useful. It's just that it's a little bit disconcerting when it's up there um, and it keeps changing because you don't really know what's wha why. But once you start making clicks on here, it starts to make sense what it's trying to do and it's actually a huge help. So to start with, I'm going to just UV this um, and, and start to make some seams on here. Now, this isn't a, a UV tutorial, so um, there's different ways of doing this. I'm just going to show you one method of doing it. So with my edge loop selected, I'm going to click on this loop here and you can see straight away that the UV preview is updated and now it's showing me what this will look like if I select these UVs at the moment. It will create this object, this separated object from this color and this object, the green color. So I've got this purple color and this green color and when I select, move my cursor over each of those colors, you can see the UV window updates. So it's previewing currently this blue shaded object and how it's going to try to, un, uh, to UV this, this blue object. And then if I scroll over this green object, it's showing you how it's going to unwrap and unfold this object. So that's why it keeps changing. So depending on this, um, I, uh, this UV scene that I've created here, um, it, it updates that preview window, which is really useful. So with this one now, I need to just modify this because this of the two UV maps, this one looks quite clean, but this one looks a bit of a mess. So let's update this one. So to do that, I will just click on this scene, uh, create a scene there and on that side as well there and this side too and then I will create a scene and just take this top face out as well so let's now roll over this window and see what we're doing so now when I roll over this color there's the UV that it's going to unwrap which is quite right it's just a square this one it's going to unwrap it uh, like this and pretty much the same all around all the way around okay and this one it's going to unwrap like this so i don't like these um, side parts on here so let's change this one around what i'll do is i'll just create a new seam around here like this and take that one as well now again, this isn't probably the best way of unwrapping, but let's just go with it. So you'll notice now that as I'm doing this, it's updating the colors on here and how it's um, separating these objects out. So now these three faces here, this one, the center one, and that one, are now being previewed as this object that you can see in the preview window. 
top face that I've got is this sort of frame. Uh, we've already discussed those ones. And this pink one here at the back, uh, we've got the base here, which is the short square. And we've got this elongated square here, which is the back face there. So it kind of makes sense what's going on. And it's a great way of just previewing and separating out our islands uh, visually before we commit to anything. We've got a good idea of how these islands are going to appear before we actually commit and, and make our uh, uh, make our UV. So let's say I'm happy with this now. What I can do is I can go down to here, scroll down, and I'll go to where it says unwrap. So the preview window's done its job. I'm happy with how it's going to unwrap. This is what you can see in now is its current state, which I'm not happy with. So I will now unwrap and those edits that I've made will become the um, UV for this object. So there we go. It's done the job and it's packed them for me in this way. Let me just expand this out. You'll notice now that this is the default and that strange blue squiggle and, and things that we had before has now disappeared because this is the new unwrapped version of this object. Now, what we have here is a kind of, a, okay, it's, it's a clean layout here, but let's try and just do a little bit of optimization on it. Not much, we don't need much. So what I can do now is you'll notice up here that we've got select islands uh, option. So with that selected, I can come into here and I can select each of these islands. And I can just move these around independently. These ones, these four objects, which make up this, this top extrusion here, these can be optimized a little bit better. So let's do that first. I'll start off by selecting this one. And I'll hit the space bar and I will choose copy. I select this one now, hit the space bar and choose paste. So it took this object that was previously here and pasted it over that one. Let's do the same with this one. Space bar, copy, select the one I want it to go to, space bar, paste, and it jumps over to there. This one, just to show you a different tool, we can go in and rotate this one around rotate so it's the same way and then we'll do the same again spacebar copy select the one you want it to go to spacebar paste so now i've got four islands all on top of one another nicely packed there change the tool over here to this gradient tool uh, sorry the rectangular tool and i'll just select all those to make sure I've got them and I know I have because they were all selected there and I'll just move this now into a location where I think it will maximize the space so let's just leave it there for now okay happy with that one so what I'll do now is I'll take this one here and if I want to let's say I wanted to move it into this um, this hole here uh, obviously it's not going to fit, it's a, bit, a little bit tight, so what I can do is uh, make sure I get it selected, spacebar, rotate it, whichever way I want, and then I can move it and let's say that's where I want to put that in there. Okay, so everything's done. Let's say this is the UV layout which I want. At this point I'm ready to apply the UV set. So I don't need to unwrap it again. If I unwrap again, it will just revert back to how it unwrapped it before based on my scenes. This is my preferred UV layout. So now I'm happy. I will say apply this. You'll also notice as I do this, it tells me this operation can't be done. Are you sure? Yeah. So with that done, We'll go up to here, and this little window, uh, little pop down here is, is the actual name of this UV. And it's not really good. I don't really like the word initial shading group. It doesn't really mean anything. So let's change this UV set name and just call it 
cube uv. Okay, so it's now we can see that this is the uv uh, for, for this uh, shape that I've made. So at this point, we're almost done. So what I'll do now is I'll actually just send this what this this object over back into the paint room just so you can see the results of what we've actually created here and then we'll make a few more tweaks to it. So with that done, I'll go over to this bake option and I will go to uh, retopo per pixel no baking, which means I don't want to bake any more information than just just send this object over to the paint room as it is. So I'll select that one. It will now say, do you want to uh, give me these options? Notice how my UV name set has changed to cube UV. And this isn't uh, important because we're not going to do any painting as such on this. So the, the texture size doesn't really matter. So I'll click OK to accept that. Now it's done. Let's jump back over into the paint room. And you'll see now that our object has been updated and it's called polygroup one which was the name it had inside the um, in the room in the uh, modeling room but now you can see we've got shading issues on this it's not quite right it doesn't quite look right so i'm not happy with this model at the moment so i'm going to change it again uh, so let's just delete this one it's good just for reference and just to see how we're done but not good enough so let's get rid of it jump back into the paint, uh, sorry, modeling room. And let's mark some seams which we want to be sharp on here. And whilst I think about it, let's just change the name of this poly, this object here. Instead of it being polygroup, let's give it a name of uh, cube edited. So now it's got a little bit more of a descriptive name. Right, so with my selection here at the top, scroll up, select, I'm going to select edges and that I just want to make sure that these edges are selected as sharp. So to do that, I will select the ones I want to be sharp. So this one, this one, and this one, I think we'll do these as well. I'm just rolling the um, mouse wheel just to make the brush size a bit smaller so I can just get those ones. If I hold down shift, multi-select those, not really necessary. So I'll go into here, select these. These ones will be sharp. And finally, that one as well, those corners. And what I'll do is I'll just make the top sharp as well. So I'll, I'll select these ones. So. Those edges are now selected. Let's scroll down here and we can see we've got an option down here. Uh, where it is? Um, selection. Oh, sorry, marker sharp. I was looking at the wrong one. Uh, marker sharp. So with those selected, I marked them as sharp edges. Right, so now with that done, let's go back and go back to bake and exactly the same thing, bake out. Leave all the options as they are, hit OK. That's done, back to the paint room. And now you can see that's much better. That's a much better result. OK, I'm happy with that. You can also see that the paint object now has been given a new name of cube edited which is what we gave the object name in the modeling room so i'm good to go here but let's just quickly paint something on here and just very quickly show how we can further um, embellish this this object so down here i'm going to click uh, on this object for layers and th this is more or less like photoshop now I've got my layers and I've got my different blending modes, etc. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into this painting. We'll do another video on that, but let's just make something. So first thing to do here is I'm just going to select uh, fill 
and I'm going to select one of these options here. So I will select this sort of metallic look, looking object surface rather. So what it will do now is it will start to bake out some initial maps to recreate this um, this this smart material and it will use an RGB um, occlusion on here curvature. So you saw it just did that very quickly and then turned itself off. You can see there it's sorry yeah it's a cavity map sorry um, RGB cavity map and if I just turn that one on you can see what it did. I'll just turn that one off. So now I've got a smart material preview which I'll just drop over the top and take a second and now you can see it starts to render out how this would look. Again it's a little bit like that UV preview it's just showing me uh, what this particular material will look like on here and if I want to I can just change this over change a new one this one requires an occlusion map so it will bake out an occlusion map just so it can represent this object a lot better sorry this the shader a lot better on this object there we go it finished the occlusion map and there we go it's updated this hasn't been committed yet this is just a preview window if you notice when I move the window over um, it, it will update only inside of this preview window so my model isn't affected as of yet okay so that's just a quick sort of um, introduction to to to, to creating uh, smart materials on the object that we've created we'll look at that in another video in more depth so let's just close this one down and close this one down. Just deselect that. I have my model. It's been UV'd. Let's check our UV map quickly before we end here. You can see my UV is now updated um, in my UV space. There's the wireframe for it and it's got this ambient occlusion map on there as well. I can turn that one on and off. It's just previewing that for me. So you can see I've got a new UV set called Cube UV associated with this model. So we're done and dusted on this in, inside of uh, 3D Coat. What I'll do now is just go to File. There's a couple of ways of doing this actually. One, one thing I'll do is actually just jump back as we're talking about the modeling room. We'll go back to the modeling room here and we'll select the faces again. I'll double click to select all the faces and I'll say mesh, export selected. And I'll call this one cube 02 and it has a UV as well. And I'll say save. Now I can do exactly the same thing in, uh, inside the paint room and I'll just show you quickly, go to file, export object and textures and if I want those textures, let's say I baked all those textures out that I showed you earlier, I can do that here or I can simply just export the geometry, click on this little dialog here and it will give me an option of where to save it. Okay, so at this point, I've actually exported. Let's go over to Maya and see the results. Okay, back into Maya now. You can see there's our previous object. I'm going to leave it all as it is, and just so we can check our results. So I'll go to File, Import, choose Cube 2 UV, import that object, and you can see it's placed it directly over the top. Now. We've got a little bit of Z fighting going on here because they're exactly over the top of each other. So let's take the original one here with this original UV on and I'm just going to hide that. So control H. And you can see here's my updated version here, cube 2. And there's my UV that I created inside of 3D coat on this object. And you can see here that the 
the um, dimensions are exactly the same for the subject. Okay, so in summary, what we did is we created an object inside of Maya. Uh, we exported that out and uh, we uh, edited the geometry inside of 3D Coat and created a new UV for it. Took that back into a paint room, did a little bit of practice painting in there and uh, using a smart material. And then we exported the model back from the modeling room into Maya, uh, ready for further editing inside of Maya. At this point, obviously, I could have brought, if I'd have baked out those maps, I could bring those into the um, into Maya and sort of preview those maps inside of here as well and, and carry on working inside Maya if I wanted to. Okay, so that's it for now. In the next video, I'll try and show you in a different application and also using the um, uh, the apps, the uh, 3D apps, which you can see I've got one already loaded in here. And we'll see the 3D app links between um, Maya and the other applica external applications. I hope you found that useful and see you in the next video. Thank you.